So far in this section we talked about regular expressions in the first video, then in the second video we looked at an, an example of a regular expression, this one in here, we extracted the email addresses from this text. In this video we will take a look at the meta characters that you can use to build regular expressions. And I'm going to go through each of these characters and explain them using the same example. So you are familiar with this text now. That is the text variable and that is the code. So we'll be changing the regular expression here, the pattern, using all these meta characters. Let's start with the first one. The first one is the dot. A dot is a meta character. You can also call these special characters. So uh, meta characters. Uh, this dot means you want to match any possible character. It could be a white space, a comma, a letter, lowercase or uppercase, and any other character. Even the dot can be matched using this dot character. So let's take a look at the example here we did use this dot actually you see here what this did in fact is it matched any character at this position so we had any character but space that then we had at here then we had any character again except space and then we had any character so one single dot means any character so it happens to be in our scenario that this any character was a dot but even if it is for example an equal operator let's say and we execute this cell again we're going to match both these email addresses because the dot captures any character so you see that it, it is so you see that it also matched this equal operator but in our example we actually have dots in email addresses and that brings us to the second meta character this character is used to escape one of the meta characters so to treat it as a regular character which means if you put that backslash before a meta character the dot in this case and if this first email address has that equal operator as a character instead of the dot and you execute this we're only going to get the second email address because in this pattern this time the dot is a literal dot is a normal character because it has this escape meta character in front so that backslash comes in handy whenever you want to escape a meta character next the square brackets uh, which could have anything inside so these three dots are just to denote that the square brackets come with something inside so this is an example of the square brackets that meta character and that is another example so inside these square brackets we can put a single character or a range or, or characters within those brackets let's see what happens if we remove this character here and the space and inside the first pair of brackets we input another we execute we get the second email address so another and then we have the at and so on but what if we remove the brackets like that and we execute again we get the same results so what is the point of having those brackets when you get the same output well when you have the brackets you can have the characters arranged in any order so let's change the place of a and put it after n so n a other instead of another if you execute that it's still going to match that string so the order of characters it doesn't matter if all these characters match a string regardless of the order you will have a match 
but if you remove the brackets now, you'll not get the same because this is not a meta character now. It's not inside those square brackets. So let's put the brackets again. Of course, if you remove an R and you execute, still you don't get a match because not all the characters are matched. That's what I'm trying to explain here, that the order does not matter. Next, the plus meta character. We already used the plus, it means that, you know, we had this. It means match any non-space character one or more times. So that means this first part of the email address could have at least one or more non-space characters, which could be letters, underscores, dashes, colons, semicolons, etc. But not spaces. Next, we have the question mark. This matches the preceding element. Zero, actually, it should be zero or one time. So, see what happens if we replace the plus here with a question mark and execute. You will get only the last letter of the word another. Because one matches is the best that this question mark can do. So it only catches one letter. Then we have the asterisk, which matches the preceding element zero or more times. Uh, so the plus got at least one or more times, which means in the case of plus, which was like this, we got another at example.de, and if we have a dot here in example.com, we also get that. But if we replace that to an asterisk and execute, Again, we get the same result, but see if we add .com to this at blah blah blah, we will get at blah blah dot com also because the asterisk matches zero or more elements, which means there are zero elements before the at. So zero elements are allowed to be before the at symbol. Therefore, we get that. So if you don't want that, you want to use plus to get at least one element. If you want a particular number of elements to match a particular number of, of characters, so not one or more, not zero or more, but let's say three. In that case, you use that and the number of characters you want to match. So let's say three and you'll get that PLE. So we're looking at this expression. I jumped over this because it has to do with that, so I'm going to replace it, to place that in there. And you can also do it like this. So match from 3 to 6, for example. Uh, without the space, sorry. And you get that. So this is not what we want in this case, so plus again is the meta character that extracts all the emails. Next, we have this symbol which matches the beginning of a line. So the beginning of a string or a line is this, this high here. And that's the beginning of the, of the string. That means if we add that to here, for instance, we're not going to get anything because we are telling Python to get us uh, the email addresses that are met at the first place, at the first position of the string. So it's not really what we need in this place. You could be using this in, in special scenarios, but not in this example. Same goes for at the end of the string. So this will match only the email addresses at the end of the string. Again, it's not what we need. This one here, we use that already. So it is this one. So it matches a single character or a range that is not contained within the brackets. So the space is contained within the brackets. So the space is not matched, but everything else that is not contained within those brackets is matched. So 
underscores, dashes, letters, etc. This seemingly long expression here is an OR operator. Uh, let's see how we would be using this. Let's suppose that we only want to extract the email addresses that have .com or .de. So if we had something else here, such as another at example.ne, and we don't want to extract that email address, this regular expression would not work anymore because it gets us all the email addresses. To exclude that, you want to be more, sp more specific here. Instead of saying A to Z, you delete that and you use parentheses, which are explained later on in here. And inside parentheses, you say question mark, a colon, and then you say com, the vertical bar, DE. Execute that, and you get only those that have com or DE at the end of the email address. So that is the expression for that. So that brings us to the last meta character which matches an optional expression. So this is used usually in conjunction with an OR operator as you saw in this case. So that is a list of meta characters. It's hard to remember them immediately so you'll get better as you use them in more examples, but it's a good idea to keep this list in a place so you can refer to that as you need it. So now we are done with this example, we will be looking at some other examples now so that you get more practice with regular expressions. So I'll see you in the next video.